Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to share a revelatory word with you today. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to share, and I'm going to move throughout multiple books. I was actually going to do something different, but a young man wrote me. And so I want to respond to that. And I figure the easiest way to do it is to just do it in the video because I've heard this multiple times. And uh, I let the Lord speak to me And I'm just going to give it to you what I got Okay Now we're in the book of Isaiah We're in the book of Isaiah I've had these questions asked of me I've had some big people argue it So I'm just going to give you what the word says Okay Now One of the things it talks about These are the last days Okay we're in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 And I'm going to move around in the chapter And then I'm going to go into chapter 3 And I'm going to move between books Okay But right now we're in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 Verse 2 And it shall come to pass in the last days That the mountain of the Lord's house Shall be established in the top of the mountains And shall be exalted above the hills And all nations shall flow Unto it Okay Now I'm going to move I'm going to go to 2nd Isaiah Verse 11 The lofty looks of man Shall be humbled And the haughtiness of men Shall be bowed down And the Lord alone Shall be exalted Right now brothers and sisters As we learn And grow closer To the most high let it be within your hearts to humble yourself before God Instead of making yourself into some great person Humble yourself and let God exalt you Because you got a lot of people that are exalting themselves And trying to get others to do so But when we recognize that all power, all might, all honor, all glory Go into the most high God We Talk to him, we speak to him, we pray to him in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, which is his word. Um, then we are on the right path. But when you try to bring honor unto yourself, all right, when you try to give honor unto yourself, this is what the Most High, what Yah says, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled. And when I say man, that's male and female. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. I'm in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 11. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up. And he shall be brought low. He shall be brought low. So we walk in the humbleness of our minds and spirits knowing that first of all, everything that we have comes from the most high. All right. And that any knowledge, any spiritual revelations that we are given, it is by his spirit, by his grace, by his mercy. Now, with that, I want to go into chapter 3, Isaiah chapter 3. All right? And I'm going to move around. This is talking about the daughters of Zion. The daughters of Zion. All right? We're in the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 17 Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion And the Lord will discover their secret parts In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet And their cows and their round tears like the moon The chains and the bracelets, the mufflers, the bonnets, the ornaments of the legs And the headbands and the tablets and the earrings the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, the linens, and the hood. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle of rent, and instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of a stomacher, or girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Now, I'm just going to go piece by piece with this. 
These are prophecies that we are reading, some of which are in the process of still being carried out. Others have already come to pass. When it speaks of the daughters of Zion, there are many people who say, okay, you sisters, you're going into slavery. You sisters, these things are going to happen to you. But historically, if you recognize the fact that this is the last captivity, we have lost our name, we have lost our identity, we have lost our land, we lost everything. In the other captivities, we still knew who we were and the nations knew who we were. Even though we were suffering under the hand of our captors, we knew and were known. But in this case, up until this awakening, and you still have people that swear we're not who we are, and that's fine. God will disclose to everybody. He's going to end up letting the world know who the Messianic people are, who the Hebrews are. Okay? But there's a lot of people looking at women saying, now you're, you're walking around haunting. Let's be clear. All of us have sinned. All of us have sinned. As a matter of fact, we're here, as we know, because of the sins of our ancestors. We are also still in sin and need to go with a contrite heart and ask God for mercy and forgiveness, not just of ourselves, but our nation currently. Okay, so this isn't something that just targets a male or targets a female. It's an entire nation. When it comes to the women and what they would lose, you have to keep in mind, how did we go into captivity? We were enslaved. That's how we went into captivity. Did God um, discover our secret parts? I'm starting at 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. When the females, the daughters of Zion, were taken into captivity, we were stripped naked. So our secret parts were definitely discovered. We had no rights over our bodies. Neither did the men who were with us have any power or might in their hands to protect us because we were under punishment. We went into captivity under punishment. Okay. And did God take away the tinkling ornaments, the cows, the tears, the chains, bracelets, mufflers, bonnets, Ornaments of the legs, the, the headbands, the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel. We were at the bottom of ships. We were at the bottoms of ships. And believe me, we did not look good. So where many people try to say this is something coming, this is something that has come to pass. This has already happened. Okay. Now, when I get to the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 24, I'm going to read from there. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. In enslavement, they were not trying to make the females uh, get, get the opportunity to stay washed and feel clean. We did have a stink. We definitely did have a stink. There's even a movie that gives you an idea of some of the things we went through 12 years of slave where you see the female actress. She's literally just trying to get a bar of soap. And when she snuck away to another plantation, just trying to get a bar of soap, when she came back to the man that repeatedly raped her, who she worked her fingers to the bone for, he beat her merciless, mercilessly. OK, so we know. During those days, hygiene was not something we could maintain. We definitely did have a stink. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. During enslavement, when we were brought here, in many cases, they shaved our heads. They shaved our heads. The men may have gone through one level with it, but women... They shaved our heads because they looked at our hair as being unclean. They looked at our hair as being unclean. Now, having been on that ship, on that dreaded ride, where we were laying among our own vomit, feces, urine, blood, and every other thing you can imagine, some people dying and decomposing until the body was removed at the bottom of those ships. We were only being rinsed off on the top of the boat when they brought us topside. Okay, yes, when we came out of those boats, we looked dreadful. But one of the things they did, they shaved the women's head. They shaved their head. So 
these were prophecies that had already come to pass. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, once again, you need to read what is slave cloth, what is Negro cloth, because sackcloth and slave cloth and Negro, it's a very coarse like burlap cloth that they actually gave to the enslaved people here in America. They gave us coarse clothing like unto sackcloth. As a matter of fact, they did not want us to feel comfortable. They didn't even want the cloth on our back to give us any form of ease. Okay? Um, and instead of, and burning instead of beauty, thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty men in the war. Many men were and are still being killed. Many men were and are still being killed and murdered. So we know this prophecy played out and is still playing out. But when we got here, the horror of what was going on, many of the men, because some sisters do act contrary, as do some young men, they look at it like somehow salvation from the Most High God is only going to the male, which I find shocking, stunning. Uh, I find it very self-exalting because, like I've said, all of us have sinned, all of us. But this seems to be something that is continually promoted. It's promoted like it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to the women getting it. One of the things is we are here in our land of captivity, all of us, all of us. We're not in an atmosphere where we were taught correctly where we were allowed to follow our culture correctly. In many cases, the black family was always torn apart. You have young women that, even men who know they have daughters, they don't take the time to teach their daughters. They're trying to escape paying child support. Okay, so some of these young women, they see their dad every so often. And a lot of the men that complain about how some of these young women are have daughters that they don't deal with. They don't even attempt to teach them. So the street is teaching them. The same way there's a complaint about the young men not being men. Because once again, they do not have a father around. This thing did not just hit the males. It hit the entire house of Israel, Judah. It hit us, but it's the effect is varying depending on which one you're talking to. Now, uh, I want to go into uh, chapter four. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Many men are talking about having seven wives. And one of the things that I took notice of, one of the revelations that came to me is the greater majority of these men who are looking forward to this, glorying in it, they don't have a wife right now. They don't have a wife. They're not. They don't know how to order a home. And basically, this is something in their mind that they want to do for lasciviousness, for lasciviousness. And basically, when this was going on, this was during the time of war. This was during the time of war. You got to remember how these prophecies are playing out. And one of the things that was a reproach to the daughters of Israel one of the things that was a reproach to the daughters of Israel was being barren, was being barren, particularly when we were uh, practicing our culture and our faith. Whether you look at Hannah, who was the mother of Samuel, whether you look at Sarah, who gave Hagar, whether you look at Rebecca, whether you look at Rachel, who gave her handmaid, or Elizabeth, who states in the book of Luke, the Lord has taken away my reproach. The reproach was from not being able to have children. It is spoken about throughout the Bible. I think a lot of this is taken out of context. And you have men that are making videos, literally, where the women look like they're in a harem. They're dressed in harem garb. I mean, some of them even have G-strings on. 
there's nothing spiritual about it. Remember, we are supposed to humble ourselves. And at the same time, a lot of these same said people are, they're talking about having seven wives, seven wives. They're depicting the women. Basically, they look like whores. They, the women are dressed like whores. They're dancing all around. And then the man also says he's one of the 144,000. In the same breath, he speaks on the fact of being one of the 144,000. But let's see what the 144,000 are. Irregardless to who gets the wives, let's see what the word of God states about being part of the 144,000. Okay. Um, the one hundred and forty-four thousand. They follow the land wherever he will go. That's the word of God. They follow the word of God wherever the word of God will go. And the other thing that they do, they have not been married. They are virgins. They are virgins. Okay. Um, to be exact. Wait a minute, because I don't want to read it wrong. I don't want to read it wrong. But just to keep going. The 144,000 are men that have never lain with women. They are virgins. They follow the word of God wherever it shall go. They follow the lamb, the lamb being the word of God, wherever it shall go. Meaning whatever the way the word tells them, that's the thing that they follow. That's what they follow. Now we're going to move on. I'm not going to stay on it much because I know there's a lot of resistance. And like I said, in many cases, when some of the men spoke to me, these are men that had never had a wife, never had a wife that are dying for having seven. And just to give you an idea, because these are men who speak of following the law. These are men who are deep into the law. And if you take a wife, okay, you shall not diminish from the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. Everything that you give the first wife, you have to give all the subsequent wives. You cannot diminish their food, their clothes, even their marital rights. It's in the book of Exodus. Everything in marital rights are if you lay with her and the other one wants you to lay with her, you got to lay with her. And if the other one wants you to lay with her, you got to lay with her. And you, this is the law. And many of these brothers follow the law. Okay. But this is what the law says in the book of Exodus. Whatever you do for the first wife, you have to do for all the subsequent wives. And whether the wives say we will furnish our own remnant doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what the word of God says. And according to the word of God, the man has to supply it. Okay. Now to move on, because like I said, a lot of guys are literally waiting on this. And many of the men that speak on it, one of the pervading factors is they don't have a wife. They don't currently have a wife. To know how to run a house, to know how to order a home or how to maintain that home, how to deal with all the changes that can go on in a home. Now we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 31. First thing we're going to read is Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. The Lord has created a new thing in the earth. We're in Jap Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 30, 22. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Why is she backsliding? Because she's not following the covenant of God. She's backsliding. She's following the ways of other nations. She's not following his law, statutes, and commands. She's backsliding. Okay? He's talking about the nation. Okay? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Now, we're going to go to stay in the same chapter, Jeremiah chapter 31, but we're going to go to verse 31. 
Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Remember in, in verse 22, he said, I, the, for the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Now in 31, he says, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. How do we know they broke it? We're going back to 22. How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? They backslid. They did not keep the covenant. They broke the covenant. Okay? But for the Lord hath created a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. But we know symbolically, spiritually, figuratively that the nation of Israel, Israel and Judah, are married to the Most High God. He is our husband. Okay? So now we're leaving verse 22 in chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah, and we're going into verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. In 22, he says, for the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. We know originally when the Lord went at his people, they re they rejected him and went after the no gods, those false gods, those, those ways of other nations. So now the Most High Yeshua, Yahuwah, is making a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, backslide. Remember verse 22. Okay. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Remember, he made a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. Originally, God said, I was a husband. I was after you. I was taking care of you. But you were a backslider. You broke my covenant. You ran after those no gods. Practicing fornication. Fornication being going after the ways of other no gods. Those false gods. Those other nations. Okay? And... Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts. And I will be their God. They shall be my people. Okay. And they shall no more teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. We also know that the people go seeking after God. They go seeking. We remember ourselves in the land of our captivity. We remember ourselves, and we remember God, and we go after him, circling around. Who are we circling around? Our husband, our God, we go after him instead of him coming after us like he did in the days of our ancestors with the old covenant where he tried to get us to follow his ways and we forsook him and ran after no gods and we were backsliders. He being a husband to us now, he's like, I'm going to do something totally different. I'm going to write it in your heart. I'm going to put it on your inward parts. To where you literally seek after him. We are seeking after him. That's what we're doing here in the land of our captivity. We are seeking after God. We're seeking after his word. We're seeking after his salvation. Yeshua HaMashiach. His word of life which is in us. Putting life inside of us. We recognize ourselves. We remember to whom we belong. And we're seeking out our husband. Our husband as a nation. Who we are married to. Even though we backslid. Even though we backslid. We've gone through the punishment. God even tells us in the book of Hosea. And I'm going to just speak it. Hosea gets married. His wife. Once again, is a fornicator, the wife representing Israel and Judah. 
she goes away. She thinks her lovers give her all these things. And in the end, God strips her of everything. He discovers her nakedness. Just like we are naked. We don't have our covering. Who is our covering? Our covering was the most high God. Okay. And when she recognizes there's no one to help, she goes after God. She starts, she remembers herself. She remembers who she is and to whom she belongs. Well, when we go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22, when you read, how long will thou go about, O thy backsliding daughter? He's talking about his people. We backslid. We broke the old covenant. How do we know? We go to verse 32. We're still in chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, backslider. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Now we go back to 22. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Even though he was a husband to them, they broke the covenant. He says, for the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. When we remember ourselves, when we recognize why we're here, the sins of our ancestors and our own, we seek after God. That man is our husband, is the word of God. We're seeking it. We're circling around him. We want him. And what does God do to make sure this doesn't happen again? To Because this is our last punishment, brothers and sisters. This is our last captivity. This is it. How does he do it to make sure this time as we circle him, we know we belong to you. We know what we did wrong. Okay. What does he do? I'll tell you what he does. But it sh this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. Write them in their hearts. And it will and will be their God, and they shall be my people. There's no forgetting. There's no forgetting it now. Brothers and sisters, I just wanted to share this because a lot of people, I think when they give these words out, somehow they want to self-elevate, put another person down, and the only person, once I said it before, even though People talk about these seven women with one husband and the men going to die and this is why. And we, Our eyes need to be on God. That's what we need to be on. Our eyes need to be on God. You have some people want to be the 144,000. I don't know who's going to be the 144,000. God didn't tell me. I know there's 12,000 out of each 12 tribes of the house of Israel, but for guys to be talking about having seven wives and then turn right back around and say they they specifically are going to be one of the 144,000 they do err because the 144,000 do not have wives they do not they're virgins and they follow the lamb of God wherever he goes meaning whatever the word says which is just and right and pure they follow the word of God no matter what okay it doesn't say they had seven women. So a lot of these people uh, are teaching this thing wrong. And then on top of it, many of the brothers have never even been married. They're actually, they're actually some of them are looking to the brothers like, yeah, you can help me get a wife. No, you ask God to bless you. You ask God to help us grow up. So that we know how to conduct ourselves. We know how to run a home. Because this beautiful thing that God is doing is not based on something lascivious. And when you get proud, God brings the proud down. So brothers and sisters, we working out our own salvation. Again, I'm going to go back to Jeremiah 31 verse 22. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Remember, the woman is representing the wife, and God is the husband. The wife being the entire nation of Israel, Israel being Israel and Judah. Okay? We backslid. We broke the covenant. 
But now we come to ourselves. We remember, we recognize our sins. And I ask that God have mercy on all of us. I'm not here to do a blame game. I'm just here to bring the truth out as, as God gives it to me. Okay? How long will thou go about, O oh, thou backsliding daughter? That's the one we broke that first covenant. Okay? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. We come to ourselves and we remember. Who is the man? The woman is the nation of Israel. Israel, Judah, the entire nation. And the man that we're accomplishing is the word of God. It's our husband. It's the most high God. Okay. How do we know that that's our husband? Okay. Well, we're going to go to uh, Jeremiah 31, 32. Okay, when God, behold, he said he's going to do a new thing in 22. For the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. All right. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand and brought them out of the house of Egypt. Which my covenant they break. They break. Meaning there's that backsliding, there's that backsliding. When we look at verse 22, we're still in chapter 31 verse of the book of Jeremiah. But when you go back and look at verse 22, he's talking about the backsliding because we break that old covenant. Okay. But he says, which covenant they break? Although I was a husband unto them, he was a husband unto us. Who? Israel and Judah. Right, he says, but back in 22, for the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man, circle him, go after him, seek him out. Who are we seeking out? In the land of our captivities, we come to ourselves, we start waking up. We're seeking the most high. Who is the most high? We're in verse 22. Now we're going to verse 32 at the end. Although I was a husband unto them, a husband unto them. So we're circling, we're circling God. We know we belong to you. We also know what we did wrong, but there is no other place to go. No other place I know, no other love have I than my most high God to whom we belong. And we are circling, we are compassing that man. We're compassing him. Who is he representing? And who's that man represent? Our husband. Who is our husband? The Lord, the Lord, he's doing a new thing. We're going after him now. And to ensure, to ensure that we don't forget who we are, whom's we are, or who he is, he's going to write it on our inward parts. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. He's doing a new thing. It's a new covenant, brothers and sisters, so that we never, ever experience this again. And like I said earlier in the book of Isaiah, a lot of the things that the women go through, we've gone through an enslavement. We did have a stink. They didn't allow us to wash up. We definitely didn't come over there dressed in jewels and pearls and finery and change of clothes. And they shaved our heads. So we experienced baldness. And many of the men did die by the sword and in the war. Any war we went into, they put us on the forefront. They put us on the forefront. Any war we fought with them, remember, going into captivity, we were not on the winning team. We lost. That's how we got in captivity. Dying by the sword, they, they're still killing us. But God is coming. And when this last war comes, you take courage because God is in the midst of us. God is in the midst. And when our enemy comes up against us, just like in the days of old, he's on our side. He's on our side. Terror, pits, snares, traps. That's what they're going to fall into. They're going to sleep a sleep that's a perpetual sleep for which they will never awaken again. Because the most high God, who is the only God, the one true God, is coming. For Israel and Judah. And this shall never come again. Never come again. Why? He did a new thing in the earth. He's done a new thing. Even though we forsook him. We did. You know, it wasn't just our ancestors. We got to tell the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Help us. God help us. God. Let's be clear now. That backsliding. The backsliding was not just our ancestors. We did it too. We did it too when we follow the ways of his nations where we are. We got that political correct. Go along and get along. We did it 
too, but we came to ourselves. As we're waking up, blessed brothers and sisters, all love, all love to my family. And I mean this, we all sinned. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Before I pointed to, I got three pointing back at me. I don't even, look, all of us, it's not just backsliding from my ancestors. No, we did it right here in captivity. Yes, we did. And many of us still do. Were it not for the mercy and grace of God, we'd be gone. We would be gone. Were it not for him honoring his holy name, we would perish. We would perish. And were it not for the fact he's keeping his covenant. Covenant with who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, he is. It's mercy's sake. It's nothing we did that we can brag or boast. If we going to brag, because, oh, I can brag. I'm bragging about the most high. You want to see a God who is God. You want to see power that is power. You want glory that is glory. Here come God. You ain't never see nobody like Yahuwah. And I honor glory. It's, it's mind-blowing. But anyway, how long will thou go about, O thy black backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. We come to ourselves. We come to ourselves. We backslid. Now we remember. And we chasing them. We circling them. I know it's you, God. And until I get you, I'm going to just stick around. I'm going to come around. I'm going to call around. I'm going to be around. I ain't going nowhere because there ain't nowhere to go. Okay. Now, he created a new thing. He did it in our hearts. He made us jealous for him. He was jealous for us and we rejected him. He gave us to a foolish nation. We come to us and wait a minute. I know to whom I belong and it ain't you. I belong to the most high. We come to ourselves and we compass him. We compass him. We keep going in. We keep going in. And God responds. When I went at you, when I was with you, when I was going at you, you backslid. You left me for a no God. Them other nations, okay? Now we're going to do a new thing. I'm going to prick your heart. You're going to follow me when you realize you had the beauty. You had the glory. You had the real husband who is God. Okay, so now what are we doing? We compassing him. A woman shall compass a man. Some things are symbolic. Some things are literal. A woman shall compass a man. Who is the man to the woman? We're going to the bottom of verse 32. We're still in chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah. Although I was a husband unto them. So the woman is compassing the one to whom she was married. She's looking at him. I know you. I remember you. I'm yours. I need you to remember me. There is no else to go. When we go to her, the book of Hosea, Hosea being symbolic too, Hosea's wife goes out. She starts cheating with them, them other lovers. And when they don't help her when she gets in snare, she remembers her first husband. She remembers the real husband. Okay? Well, that's what's happening to us right now. And to ensure we never forget, because this is the last captivity. God going to do a new thing. He doing a new thing. It's beautiful. He going to write it on the inside. He going to put sign his name across our heart. That's what he's going to do. That's what he said. He's going to write it on the N-word part. We're going to have a signature. I belong to the Most High. Where's that signature? It's a, he signed it across my heart. He wrote it in love. He wrote it in redemption. He wrote it in the blood of the Lamb to whom I believe because that's his word. That's what he did. I will put my law in it. Inward parts and write it in their heart. He gonna sign his name across our hearts. Put his law, put his commands, put his statutes. He gonna cleanse us. That's what he's gonna do. And we compass in him. We compass in him. We in Jeremiah <coughs> chapter 31, <coughs> verse 22. Remember, it's working back and forth. How long would that go about? How long? How long? What you looking for? I'm right here. Oh, thou backsliding daughter. That's the most high looking at us. How long you gonna go about? You done went every which way. Ain't none of them ways anyways. Because I am the way. What did his words say? You went this way. You went that way. But the only way that you can go is me. Why? Because I am the way. I'm the one to whom you have to do. Oh, backsliding daughter. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. But the Lord created a new thing in the earth. 
a woman who compass a man, we remember, we remember, we remember. Wait a minute, and I ain't gonna stop. We chasing him, and rightfully so. We chasing him, don't wanna know anybody else. We know to whom we belong. He said it, what did he say? What did he say? My sheep know my voice, I hear his voice. Wait a minute, we over there. I know you, I know you, and we composite, we composite. Who is the woman? The woman was his wife. Who's the wife? We're the nation. Who's the nation? Israel and Judah. How do we know? Wait a minute. We're going to go Jeremiah 31, 31. Remember, from 22, he created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Who's the woman? It's the wife of the Lord. How do you know that's the wife of the Lord? Well, we can go to the bottom of Jeremiah 31, 32. He said it. Although I was a husband unto them. Unto who? That woman. That woman that keeps circling me and circling me. That's right. I know who you are. We were married to you and we don't want any other. We were wrong. We went the wrong way and we paid a heck of a price. Okay. Hmm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. With the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Why? Because we remember. We remember. And we circling and we circling and we circling. Why? Because he used to be our husband. He was the real one. He was the good one. Now we remember. We forsook him. We were backsliders. But he did a new thing. We circling him now. Why? Because when we backslid, we broke the first covenant. So now he's doing a new thing. What's the new thing? Not only are you going to circle me, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. You are? That's right. I'm going to write it on your inward parts. I'm going to write it across your heart. That's what he's going to do. Brothers and sisters, the word, the love, the glory, the joy. I'm just telling you how beautiful God is. How beautiful God is. And I pray to God that we all make it in. That's what I pray. Although I know there are some who are going to be Nimrods. What are Nimrods? They're rebels. And those rebels are going to be destroyed in the wilderness. They're going to be destroyed. And that's between them and the Most High. But I pray to God, I'm not talking to any Nimrods. I'm not talking to any Nimrods or Nimrodesses. No rebels. That we are of that, that, that Confederate house. Okay? And, but it shall be... But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, say, I father to whom we have to do. I will write, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. He going to write it right across our heart. Who? Our husband. Who's our husband? The Lord. How do you know that? Because he said it. Last statement in verse 32 of chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah. He's our husband. The woman that's compassing him about, that's us. We come into ourselves. We're remembering who we are. We're following his word. We remember. We went the way of the other nations thinking that was the way and it wasn't no way because it ain't nothing to him but death, darkness, and destruction. But we come into ourselves, brothers and sisters. We come into ourselves. We don't need that anybody teach us because God's writing it. He going to sign his name. He going to put all his information on the inward part. He going to download the spiritual truths on us. That's what he's going to do. Now, when we hit 35, because some people try to say, some people try to say, Israel doesn't matter anymore. That The church just belongs to everybody. You know, the name just everybody is everybody. Okay, but we're going to work that thing out real quick before I sign off. We're still in Jeremiah chapter 31 because it's got some intense information. But we're going to go Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me. What does that mean? That means he's always going to recognize Israel. Always. As long as the sun, the moon, and the stars do the thing he told them, we will be recognized. He also made that covenant 
with who? With Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. And remember, when you look at verse 22, yeah, we were that backsliding daughter, but he's doing a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. Who's the woman? The woman is the nation, the nation of Israel and uh, Judah. How do we know? He said it. He said it. He said, I'm going to do a new thing. What's the new thing? A woman shall compass a man. Who's the woman? Well, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. Then when you get to the bottom of verse 32, here's the woman. Well, who's who's talking? Who's this guy? Although I was a husband unto them. You were a husband? That's right. We come to ourselves. We circle the hand now. We remember who we are. And God, when he responds, we're not going to have this a second time. This is the last time. When we get gathered in, we go home permanent, permanent. And brothers and sisters, I pray that God blesses you. I pray that this God, this word uh, anoints and refreshes you. And God bless all. And shalom. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. I was trying to pour it out as it was coming to me. Shalom, shalom, shalom. He going to write it across our hearts. He going to write it right there. There's going to be a signature. There's going to be a statement. It's in my inward parts. And, and he wrote it on my heart. There will be no forgetting this time. There will be no more forgetting. You have a beautiful day, brothers and sisters. Walk in the light. Study your word. For the word is Yeshua HaMashiach. And we know that his word comes from God. He can only say what God tells him to say. Walk in the light, brothers and sisters. It's a good light. Matter of fact, let me say this. As long as you have the word inside of you, you got life inside of you. You have some people walking around here that are the, the walking dead. They really are the walking dead. As a matter of fact, when they die, they'd be twice dead, almost thrice dead. How do you know that? If they do not have the word of life in them, they don't have life. They are already dead. They're the walking dead. Okay, but we know to whom we have to do. We know to whom we belong. So don't let anybody rob you of your reward, brothers and sisters. Follow the light. You follow after Yeshua HaMashiach, who is that? That's the Son of God. That's the Word of God. God sent him. He redeemed us. His Word is life, is bread, is glory. Shalom.